Hey book lovers, Victoria here and you're watching My Books Me. Today I'm bringing you another review. I've been really good with the book reviews this year so far, which is really good. And as you can probably tell by the title and the thumbnail, it is for King's Cage by Victoria Aveyard, the third book in the Red Queen series. I was kindly sent a copy from Hatchet Australia and oh my god, this book is amazing. Before I do get into the review, I just want to say that this review will contain spoilers for Red Queen and Glass Sword. Obviously, I'm not going to reveal any spoilers for King's Cage itself, but if you haven't read the first two books or if you haven't got around to reading the second book, then I definitely recommend doing that before watching this video unless you want to be spoiled by events that do take place. So we pick up right after Mare has been captured by Maven. She's been forced to live under the weight of Silverstone first, um, under first under the weight of four of the guards and then silent stone manacles so that she cannot use her lightning power and as the months go on this causes her to sort of forget about what her lightning power feels like and at one point she is without the Averns or the Silent Stone and she's unable to um, conjure any sort of lightning because it has been so long that her body just is too weak to be able to produce her power. Despite the entire royal court asking or demanding that Maven properly punish Mare, who is a traitor and a rebel and, you know, it's quite a big punishable offence for everything that Mare's done, but Maven uh, continues to say no and is using her as a voice to try and stop the rebellion by letting Reds know that the Scarlet Guard is the true enemy and that they don't want to help New Bloods, they want to kill them. So Maven wants to get the New Bloods to join his army so that he can fight not only the Lakelands, but also the Scarlet Guard. And despite how much Mare wants to try and show that it's not her saying it, that it is just words being put in her mouth and that she doesn't believe a thing, it's really hard for her because, you know, she it's, it's really hard for her to come across like that, to make Maven happy that she's saying the right thing, but also letting those in the Scarlet Guard and the Reds around the nation that they shouldn't be listening to her. So as the months go by with Mare unable to escape the King's Cage, the Scarlet Guard is slowly um, keeping tabs on her and working out their next target. They've since moved away from the island and are in just across the border in the Lakelands and they keep tabs on what Mare and Maven are up to and although they know they can't um, go and save Mare at this point because the king has got quite a lot of guards around Whitefire Palace, um, they do turn their eye on Corvium which is the military city um, just near the Choke which has a lot of red soldiers and a lot of silver uh, silver soldiers and garrisons and they know that if they can break Corvium that they know it'll weaken the king in the eyes of the nobles and the reds and it'll hopefully give the reds something to fight for and not go against the Scarlet Guard. So along with the attack on Corvium, house division among the royal houses is slowly weakening Maven's court and his hold not only on the silver elite but the Reds. While the Reds still sort of want to support their king, there are a lot of people in the Silver Court who really want to overthrow Maven because he doesn't really deserve to be on the throne and he's just taking the kingdom in the wrong direction that a lot of them believe. But there are now more forces at play in this Red Rebellion. It was It's no longer it's no longer the Scarlet Guard versus Maven. There are rebelling royal houses in play that have ramifications for everyone involved. And just when Mare thinks she's got everything figured out, it all comes crashing down, threatening to take her heart with it. <sighs> so I've been anticipating this book since I read Glass Sword last year. It has been a very long wait, but I can tell you now it's definitely worth it. These past couple of months have been really hard, especially after the release of the amazing um, teaser trailer, which, like, that looks really good. If you haven't seen it already, I will link to it below. But, like, the wait was definitely worth it. As soon as this book arrived, I dove straight in. It is 500 pages long, at least my copy is 500 pages long. It only took me three days to read it, which is such a surprise for me. 500 page books are usually a little bit intimidating but I managed to read it in three days and I just loved it so much. So for those who don't know this book is actually told from multiple perspectives. The main perspective throughout the book is obviously Mare while she's at Whitefire Palace and the other perspective is from the Scarlet Guard although I'm not actually going to tell you who in the Scarlet Guard we get to see um, the perspective of because I think it's just a nice surprise. I definitely was, well I was definitely wasn't expecting this character, it was a character that I'd kind of sort of forgot about, um, but we are introduced to them in Glass Sword, so, but their perspective is really interesting um, as part of the Scarlet Guard, so we do get to see there as well. 
Um, and then in the sort of later part of the book we also get another perspective thrown in which is a really nice surprise I reckon a lot of you guys will be really happy and surprised to see that perspective and it definitely um, shows you a different side of that character and it definitely sets up quite a lot for the fourth and final book I'm really hoping that these multiple perspectives will continue in the final book because they're just a really nice um, really nice way to tell the story and especially now that there are three sort of teams teams sort of thing you know what I mean like there's the Scarlet Guard there's a there's Maven and then there are the rebelling houses there are three um, players involved so I'm really hoping that the multiple perspectives continues and we get those three perspectives fingers crossed that we finally get Cal and Maven's perspectives um, I think actually that would be a really good uh, final book we get Mayor Maven and Cal's perspectives but fingers crossed so firstly I have to mention, if you are a Maven and a Mare shipper, you're going to love this book. They have so many scenes together that really just show a different side to Maven. We get to both see Maven as a monster and then Maven through the eyes of Mare as the boy she once knew, the boy she once thought she loved, and the boy which is sort of still there under the surface that still has feelings for Mare. And I definitely think you guys are going to love it if that's your ship, but also if you are a Mare and Cal Shipper, you're also going to love this book because they also have quite a few um, really cute scenes that, oh, I just, they are one of my all-time favourite ships. I love them. Um, also, for those of you um, who have been following sort of spoiler releases and hints and things like that, you'll also know that there is a lesbian romance in this book, which I didn't know who to expect the characters to be that were involved, and they are two characters that we've been previously introduced to. And the main character in it, it was definitely a surprise to me. I definitely wasn't expecting it her to be part of the relationship. But again, it definitely shows a really interesting side to her. And I also love the way that this was written in. The fact that it was written in as if we should have known all along. It was just casually dropped. And, you know, as if it was something we should have noticed back when we were first introduced to these characters. And it really adds an interesting element to the book. Um, the only thing I found weird was just the way... It was written, not necessarily written into the story, but how it played out in the story. It's really hard to explain. If you read the book, you might understand just the, the setup with the relationship as a whole. Um, it's interesting, but it was really good, and I'm hoping we get to see more of that in the next book. So, so much happens in this book, and so much is revealed in this book. Sort of every single chapter, we get a little hint of something else, and there were definitely some twists and turns I did not see coming. Especially the whole, well, the rebelling houses was something that was definitely coming anyway, but how that um, unfolds and where that goes is definitely really interesting and it definitely has huge ramifications for everyone involved in this book and um, where the story will go from here. Like, this story is definitely completely different to where at least I thought it was going to go from the first book, and I'm sure everyone thinks that as well. There have been so many twists and turns over all three books that it's going to be so interesting to see how this story ends. And it's really intriguing, it's not only intriguing, but it's also heartbreaking. And I'm just really excited now to go into the final book. I'm also really keen to also go back and read them all again. I just think it'd be interesting to read them all in one sitting and just get the full story and pick up on the little things that have been woven through the books that maybe we haven't picked up on because we've had to wait a year for the next book. At some points this story did seem slow but at the same time it was very fast paced, very action packed and I just, I don't think at the end looking at the book as a whole, I definitely think there, there definitely wasn't slow parts, it was just, it felt slow within the story but they're sort of not, if you know what I mean, it's really hard to explain. With every page you you're drawn further into the story, especially with that multiple perspectives which I really think helps because you get um, Mare's perspective and then you sort of throw him back over to the Scarlet Guard and back and forth and I think that that just really helps. Um, and of course, if you've read the first two books, which I'm hoping you have if you're this far into this review, you'll know that Victoria 3 is in some big twists and turns. While I don't think the twists and turns were as big, because you sort of get one major twist near the end of the book, I feel like this one had a lot of smaller, uh, smaller plot twists near the end, which sort of, I suppose, as a whole, add up to one big one. It, you just sort of kept getting these little details that added up to a big thing, and like, the epilogue in this book, oh my god. I'm just, 
Ugh, I can't believe I have to wait a year now for the next book. It is ridiculous. Overall, this was a fantastic installment in the series. I definitely think these books continue to get better and better as they go on, which can only mean that the fourth and final book is going to be mind-blowing. And with everything that's happened in this book, it is definitely going to be an action-packed, drama-filled, explosive final installment. So much more needs to happen with these characters. Like, this story is nowhere near finished at the end of this book. And, oh my god, <laughs> it's just... When... I finished the first two books I fell into a reading slump and literally within 10 minutes of finishing this one I felt like I wanted to fall into a reading slump and because I didn't want to pick up another book before I actually wrote my review on my blog which I didn't end up doing for like two days I was like I need to read but I need to write my review but I don't I don't want to fall into a reading slump like if <laughs> If you've really loved these books, then you're going to absolutely adore this next one. If you've been on the fence about this series, I definitely think this book will be able to sway you to liking the series, I hope. Um, but definitely, if you haven't already, give, give the series a try. So obviously, I gave this book 5 out of 5 stars. I thought it was brilliant. I am dreading the long, the year-long wait that we have to endure now. I'm hoping that maybe we get the book a little sooner. I don't know. So in the description below I'm going to leave a link to my blog review if you just want to read that. I'll also leave a link to the Goodreads Book Depository and Booktopia pages so that you can get this book if you haven't purchased it already. It is beautiful. It is amazing. It is highly recommended. It is so far my favourite read of the year which like it's going to be hard to top this book. It being my most anticipated re book release for the year it did not let me down at all. And I can't wait to see where this story goes to now. I just, I love this world. And it was so great to be back into it. That is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.